Uh, welcome to another episode, Dr. James Beckett Sports Card Insights here with Rich Klein. We're going to talk about uh, a new person uh, going to their first card show and seeing what uh, what they should lock, look out for, what will they enjoy. If you're the parent of such a person or the older brother or the younger brother or younger sister, younger brother, younger sister, whatever, but uh, what, what are the uh, pitfalls or what are the uh, the enjoyment there. First, thanks to our sponsors, Beckett Media, Beckett Grading, Beckett Authentication, Burbank Sports Cards, Mike Stadium Sports Cards, ComC, COMC.com, Heritage Auctions, Huggins and Scott Auctions, Panini, Tops, and Upper Deck. So you're walking into a card show, for example, the shows that you have or other shows around here, or the uh, it could be a huge show or a small show. Uh, it's actually, what would you advise for somebody if it's their first acquaintance with the industry and you're the parent or the you're you're going to get dropped off at a at a show uh would you advise going to a small show or a big show i i always say you know we were talking about this with the card stores that it always helps to start small however if you're in like this year you were in the chicago area you might go to the national as your first show because it's you know, such an interesting event. You may go because mm-hmm. you like some of the autograph guests that are there. Every show afterwards would pale in comparison. But let's say they start out at your show, which is uh, coming up. Your your show at the. I mean, you actually have some other monthly shows that are at a at a at a, at a hotel. But your your synagogue show is super friendly to kids and collectors of all levels, uh, and it's manageable. They could come in. They'd get some free stuff. They'd walk around. They wouldn't be pressured to buy a bunch of expensive stuff. They would get to look, but. You couldn't, if, if, if somebody was dropped off by their parent, you couldn't drop them off for five minutes. No, it's, it's, they have to be there for an hour. 30 minutes to an hour. You know. to, to be able to look through and see. And again, if that's assuming they already like one of the sports enough that they'd want to identify with some of the players, I would guess. All right. And as you say, I appreciate that. It's, I want all my shows to be kids friendly, but the synagogue show, the way it's set up at a dot hub arena really is a kid friendly show. Well, there's cards for 10 cents. There's, there's cards for 10 cents. There's a dollar gets you a couple hundred cards. Right. Just in with the, a prize. Bag, with with a, a, plus a prize. So, so they can't lose on that. But just like we said, if you're walking into a card store, uh, you can lose if you, if you sell prematurely or sell too low. So as long as you're buying and you're buying, you, you could look through some of the boxes that are at your store that are 10 cent cards. And you could buy 50 cards of, of players that you like and you spent five bucks. And then when you get picked up an hour later, Got you've got your prize bag. Maybe you got a prize. Uh, you've got some cards, and you've got cards you picked out. Well, that, that sounds fun. And not only that, on top of it, but at the synagogue show, one of the hidden benefits is because of kashrut laws. We actually sell food there. We have a we, the last few shows we've had a hot dog, chip, and soda special for three dollars. That's I mean, you can even have lunch there affordably. <laughs> Well, now you're talking. You're in sales, Rich. This is good. Uh, so, but again, should the parent, if it's, say it's a 10 year old kid and he's never been involved in the hobby, what should the, the mom or dad be concerned about if they, if, if uh, he or she drops off this kid, this, this, this young person for an hour? Well, the hardest thing, and I've had to explain this is not every show is like this show. Yeah. You know, I've, I've had mothers come up to me. Why don't you do this again next month? No, we only do this every six months. My psychic energy can't take, can't take this every month. You know, then you'd have to be scrambling for prizes. You'd have to be scrambling. Right now, right. we're in a position where we're not scrambling for cards, but at one point, we were scrambling for both cards and prizes. And so, you know, we, we try to, you know, the whole thing is you try to guide somebody, but it's, you know, at the end, it's still their choice to some extent. You know, you don't want somebody buying cards of somebody they don't like or a team they don't like or whatever. Well, so much of the industry... I mean, you're either collecting and picking out something, choosing something, or you're buying an unopened pack or an unopened box that is wrapped up. You don't know what you're going to get. You could get players that you like, players you don't like. So if the mom or dad drops off the kid, the, the young person, and here's 20 bucks, we'll be back in an hour, most kids would not have the 20 bucks, and they'd have a little stack of cards. And there's nothing, and wrong, there's with nothing that. wrong with that. That's, it's like going to the mall or something, except it's but, – but with so many dealers – who are all offering uh, different kinds of things, the, there's, there's no perfect right answer, is there? There's no, no. That's the beauty, and in, in, you know, in a way, not the beauty of this whole business. There is no right answer. There is no wrong answer. You know, it's the old saying, buy what you like, but it's also buy what you're comfortable with. And, you know, I've been very fortunate. You know, we don't have any adult material sold at the show. You don't have to, I've never had to worry about Bad stuff, bad stuff being sold at my store. I've never had to really worry about counterfeits either, you know. So right. I, I, you know, the material's good, and then it's how it's presented appeals 
to certain people. Like the boxes I bring to the synagogue are, are dime quarter boxes because this way I don't have to really monitor them. Right. That's not going to be what most kids are going to go through. Most kids right. want to look to see what's on display at tables, right. and they'll right. pick on stuff that's And they're, they're drawn to the shinier and, and perhaps even more expensive or more heavily uh, marketed cards. I mean, there's a real uh, challenge there if you're a parent to, to if you if you study up you'll realize that the best deals are not usually or at least the perception of the best deals are not packs that are 50 cents if it's an unopened pack that's 50 cents it's probably a pack from the overproduced, the, the overproduced era. era and it, and you'd have all these older cards and older players again you can't if you're buying a huge quantity that's that wouldn't be good but if you're buying a few here and there or you you know you you could see that. the problem in our industry is that the heavy marketing goes to the scarcer material at higher prices and you don't want your brand new co potential collector uh, son or daughter to have i don't think be the first pack to be a 50 dollar pack no not unless but even five dollars would not be out of question though no if you send a kid with twenty dollars and, and one of the things he purchases is a five dollar pack that even if he doesn't get anything great out of it at least you you know you haven't blown your entire budget you know, if you blow a $20 budget on a $20 pack and you get six commons, you're probably not a happy person. Um, the other thing for a young person uh, or a new collector is when you go into a card uh, show such, such as yours, you'll note that there's an awful lot of cards here. But there's also memorabilia. In fact, you have this island of misfit toys, this, this, this uh, large uh, group in the middle of the, of the of show of oversized and unusual items. And again, there's no right or wrong. If you're a, a young, a, a new collector, and you're more drawn to the memorabilia and not to the cards, that's fine too. We would, pro and honestly, we would probably let you just take something from the island. Well, don't be, don't be giving it away, Rich. <laughs> we would probably let you if you really said I need. But it. if a young person, but that's said, what I'm hey, saying. If it's really a young person asks for an item, yeah. we'd probably say just take it and yeah. don't worry about it because. Our policy with the island is if somebody pulls, let's say, three or four island misfit toys and they take ten items, you know what we say? Uh, you need help getting that to your car. Exactly. So <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Well, I know, but I'm just saying a, a, a collector may or may not be drawn to cards. If they're drawn to the sport, they may be more drawn to autographs or memorabilia or equipment. And they may find out by seeing that some of these cards have like a, a, a piece of the jersey embedded into the card. They may want to get the whole jersey sometime or... Or uh, you know, cap or some other autograph balls, all these different things that you can uh, enjoy sports collecting. You know, I want to sports card collecting. A couple of years ago, three, four years ago, I had a parent call me. I want to do a birthday party at your show. Cool. And I said, fine. I'll tell you. Here's I have one condition. Oh, for legal reasons, I want to have one or twenty five kids. I will let them in for free. I said the only condition is there has to be an adult in the room with them at all times. Yeah. And it's not because. I was afraid of, in the sense of the vendors, it just happens to be a law that if a kid buys something before he's, the, he's 17. The age, 17, he can turn it back within any, 72 hours or something. Anytime he wants, up till the time he's 17. Oh, that's... Yeah, I mean, most don't do that, yeah, but I'm I just mean, saying that's out there. It's a lemon law, but it, it, it's for the protection of these minors. But, and uh, so... So you send your kid to buy it, and then you... Well, and that's why I wanted an adult yeah, present, yeah, because yeah. if something expensive was bought, yeah. I wanted somebody to say... This that, is the real. This really is this an adult, and he's yeah. he's approving this yeah, purchase, yeah, and yeah. you've sold it to the adult. Yeah, yeah. And that was my only condition. Good. And right the kids, wise. yeah. And the kids had a great time. I think they probably spent five hundred or a thousand dollars in the room. They uh, some of them were beginning kids, some of them were more advanced. Yeah. And they had, but the thing is, they had an adult if something really came up present, and that's one of the okay. whole keys. So one of the things that comes up is that if if you're if you're a parent and you're uh, or you know, whatever, if you're just a person and you're interested in collecting, I don't like your chances. If you don't know any other collectors. No. So there's a solitary activity of collecting, but there's also a group activity of collecting. If you have other friends who are into collecting, to enjoy it together is really great. And to go to the shows together or go to the card store or the uh, to experience that together and to help each other out and protect each other, I think that makes a lot of sense. If you're the only collector in your school or in your neighborhood, it, it ought to be a contagious hobby. Well, the beauty of it is, is that if you do it right, it is a contagious hobby. And... It's something that our schools should be more interested in creating collecting clubs too, because it would be something where everybody can do it differently, but you can, it's a positive. It's really is a positive for the kids. They can learn a lot about sports. They can learn things about even dealing in business. I, I think kids learn really pretty fast. They learn very I mean, fast. They, they learn languages and other skills uh, uh, quickly when they're younger. It's adults. That sometimes it takes a little longer. So how do you explain to the parent or the older person the fact that the same card with minute and slight 
color variations or uh, errors or just other kinds of things, serial numbers that the same appearing card from a distance could have wildly different values from very cheap to very expensive. You just explain it the best you can. I mean, everybody's got a way of explaining it. And well, you, you can see it at a show. You can see it at a you show. You say, why is this card that looks the same as that? And you flip it over on the back and there's a, I mean, you did the errors and variations for, for, for our company for, for many years, did a great job on that. But that's, you know, I just don't know how it's a very immersive hobby that you lived it. I lived it. Somebody that's coming in all of a sudden right now, if they're going to a card show and it's a big card show, they're jumping off the high dive into the deep end of the pool. And unless they've got a lifeguard or somebody's going to come alongside them, they're, they're going to be overwhelmed, I think. Yeah. And I think that's why I think, as you said, because I talked about some places you might start at the national, but for the most part, I think if you start at a small hotel show, such as the ones I run or the small synagogue show, 40, 50 tables, even if it's overwhelming, it's a controllable atmosphere. It's not like going to to the national with twelve hundred tables and corporate sponsors and autograph guests. Well, uh, we're almost out of time, but it just seems to me that if somebody's into collecting, they're willing to accept this chaos, this 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 sea of cards out there, and and to be eager to jump into it rather than to be so overwhelmed they say they turn around and leave because it's because it's more than they can handle. The whole idea of collecting, there's. It wouldn't be as interesting if there there wasn't that same level of complexity. So if you're a parent of a of a kid that wants to keep it simple, I'm not sure this would be the hobby for him. But oh, you can kid, keep it simple. You just uh, have to. You just have really to. Hard. Maybe you just focus on one player or one team, and that way you've kept. Even if you have a complexity within the player, if you're doing well, Mike Trout, right. there's a complexity still, within Mike Trout, but you're focused only on Mike Trout cards. And your dad has what kind of a six figure job then? <laughs> yeah, oh, yes. Well, your dad. Pick has a different guy if you're if it's Mike well, Trout. So let, let, let's change it from Mike Trout to Rudnet Odor. <laughs> you know, and he's a local hero here ever yeah, since he punched out Jose a, Bautista. He's, right, he's a better puncher than he is a uh, at least hitter for but, average. Anyway. But but you know, but if you like Ro- Rudnet Odor, yeah. it's a completable. And you can go after it with gusto. You can go after right. it with gusto, and you can learn the ins and outs, and then you can then you can graduate to Mike Trout. Well, let's graduate to another episode uh, tomorrow. Thanks, Rich, for Thanks, uh, looking into uh, what it would be like to hit a card shop for the first, I mean, a card show uh, for the first time or be a parent of somebody that's experiencing that. So, again, thanks, Rich. Thanks, uh, listeners. We'll be back tomorrow or Monday, whatever the day this falls on, uh, with another episode. And thank you again.